Welcome to Black and White Recovery. Your hosts have been associated with recovery programs for over 50 years. This show is not associated or related to any 12-step program. The advice is strictly to be taken as advice, or it may be used for drinking games. Always consult with your sponsor, attorney, doctor, or anyone with more common sense other than Lee. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Black and White Recovery. My name's Lee. That is Ian. How are you, Ian? I am excellent. How are you, Lee? I'm doing fantastic. How is the world of recovery? What's going on in the rooms these days? Um, well, a lot of people picking up. <laughs> and uh, I shouldn't say that. Fun. But there's a lot of people getting sober, too. You know, this is uh, this is the time of the year where, um, and I think Valentine's Day really gets to people. Uh, e- either they're in a bad relationship and they need to use about being disappointed on Valentine's Day, or they're disappointed in themselves for not being with anybody on Valentine's Day. Again, much like President Trumpdom, uh, right. this seems to me like another in a long series of bullshit excuses to relapse. So you're telling me that Valentine's Day um, is a trigger point for uh, I'm guessing stupid people. Um, for uh, did you feel? Well, you're you're an on again, stuff. off again guy. Do, do you get mopey on Valentine's Day? Not at all. Neither. No, yeah. Okay. I'm just wondering. No. No. And I was single. I wound up uh, going to go see Fifty Shades of Grey with uh, with a uh, uh, with a couple people, a couple friends, a couple girls. Well. Did anybody want to act it out? Oh, and a guy. So you're not acting out anything after the movie. Disappointing. Um, not with them. Wow. By yourself again? No. All right. Good for you. No. Good no. for you. Okay. So walk no. me through. No, this. I don't hate myself today, where I have to whip myself in the in the ass. Oh, I I understand. I and I, I personally honest, don't need my, to be. Struck. My arms aren't that long. <laughs> Okay, so walk me through this. Um, I am, let's say I am a sponsee or a person with no recovery time, and Uh I am feeling disheartened because of a relationship or a lack of relationship. I guess one or the other, right? I guess that's how it works. Right, yeah. What, what, What is the advice for, well, let's start with, yay, you made it through it, but should it really be that shaky? No, it shouldn't. I mean, me, if I, you know, I'm okay being single on Valentine's Day. If I wasn't, I would probably go to a CODA meeting a couple weeks earlier and find a nice clingy one for, uh, you know, February. And then, uh, you know, hey, spring training, baseball's here. I got to go. Um, and I don't even like baseball, but it's okay. And, um, you know, I didn't have to do that this year. Okay. Uh, I'm okay. I, I remember going to the first Fifty Shades of Grey on Valentine's Day with a group of about fifty sober people, but that was a fun night. That was a fun after party. Oh, I'm I'm sure. Yeah, um, twenty of us anyway. Well, you both certainly. So at the other end of the spectrum, the Rocky entering in. What is it? You've had Rocky relationships. What oh, yeah. is it that emotion? Well, I haven't ever had one that's made me want to drink or use. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't, I don't want to sound like a dick about this, but I'm going to. I don't understand how that's relapsable. I It, it isn't. Well, you know, guys like me and you, nothing is relapsable. Not yeah. true. Not true. If something happened to my daughter, I because I don't have any experience with that emotional set. Being that emotionally connected to someone like that, I don't. If something bad happened to her, um, I would say all bets are off in my life. But yeah, that's see, I, only I because I don't know. Yeah, for me, I think it's more about committing suicide than picking up. Well, and that question too. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm really good at suicide. I mean, I came into the program because I failed at committing suicide. Right. Yeah, I can't um, get killed. And I work at being. De- undepressed most days of the week. Um, Mm. In fact, the biggest knock that I have around me these days are 
you're just two in the middle. You're not two up. You're not two down. Well, I'd like to say the meds are working. Well, it's boring. It's boring. Life in the middle is – well, my life's not boring. But certainly life in the middle is the way to live life. And I can understand for most people – like we're adrenaline junkies. We're into the thrill and the rush of the chase of a relationship. We're into chasing that other person and then yeah. dating and the thing. And right. I don't know what it's like for women, but for guys, it's all about the chase and getting laid the first time. I mean, that's all it's about. And then once you're in the relationship, the first couple of years of magic. But I can only assume for people in the program, relationships are a temporary state of affairs for the first few years in sobriety. I don't know anybody who walked in, and, and I mean this sincerely, I don't know anybody who walked in before getting sober or getting into a relationship early in sobriety that made it, you know, five or ten years. It, I'll go with an easy number, five years of relationship once they got sober because the emotional value set of the sober person changes so much. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I you know... I, I had a weird, I mean, my first year, I thought I was going to prison the rest of my life. Uh, it was to get against the condition of both of our releases to, to see a person that I was in a relationship with. And, uh, you know, the state found that it would be a good idea to keep us separated. Um, you know, trying to break up the Bonnie and Clyde of, uh, of Scottsdale, those, uh, you know, those mean streets of Scottsdale. And, um, and, you know, I mean, my first year, I mean, I would I would hate to say that I was 13 stepped because not really anybody, you know, their program was not what I wanted. It was their body parts is what I wanted. So, I mean, I don't consider I was 13 step, but my first year I was on house arrest. People knew where I was. I mean, it was fun. And then as soon as I turned a year, that phone stopped ringing. That's kind of them i guess to be 13 yeah. step on house arrest i didn't well, have i didn't have that happen in my life i mean it sounds completely warm and wonderful to have that yeah and i didn't i had a lot of newcomers in my life during during my first year as well but there were some people with some long term that you know knew i was locked up and bored that's an interesting way to keep you busy um, yeah i i like i say i have no qualms about it none None. No, I had to actually go and pursue my... See, that's why I'm always fascinated when people relapse at Valentine's Day or or any re, any relationship. Okay, here's the one that I'm... <coughs> I'm willing to go far on this one. I'm in a 10, 15, 20-year relationship. The person I love has slowly died from cancer in front of my eyes and wasted away. Um, and I go on that horrible, epic journey with them. That person passes and I am there all alone, having invested, you know, a quarter of my life or 30% or 40% of my life with that person. <clears throat> and if you tell me that person relapse or feels some form of misery, I would say, yeah, I get that. That person <laughs> needs support. I could see how that relapse happens. Right. Um, I don't want to say this Absolutely. to sound like a dick to everybody who might possibly be listening, because my belief is it's some fat fuck staring and going oh nobody loves me well put down the fucking cheeseburger okay i mean you you know you basically ate your way into this situation and nobody wants to lift up lift up that fold of flat fat to see what's underneath there <coughs> uh is that a little rough no not at all i actually came to the epiphany i i i had vanity as a character defect and and I realized that about 25 years ago, once I wasn't perfect looking, that I just gave up. I mean, I'm once I was. There were times where I was passing stores that were having sales on sweatpants that I, you know, I was going to be like <laughs> Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, just walk around in a wife beater, a gold chain, and sweatpants, and not care anymore. But uh, you know, about a month, month and a half ago, I came to an epiphany that. Vanity is not a character defect, and that having pride in your appearance is, is okay. And uh, I've, I've made some changes. I haven't made much change in my diet, but definitely exercising a lot more. And, um, and I'm not as sedentary. I don't spend four hours a day playing video games. 
So your theory of me training like a madman, getting ready for the Pan Ams in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is strictly for my vanity and to increase my net worth to hot chicks. No, I didn't say that. I mean, you do get some sort of enjoyment out of the actual combat. No, no, I don't. You don't? Well, then I don't know why you're doing it. I don't. Uh, I don't. Do you uh, get and, different and, endorphins in, in the workouts? Do you? No. no. Uh, you know what? Are, you know just, what it's like. Are you just not in acceptance of your age? I'm not in acceptance of my age. I want no, no. That. I'm in. I'm not I'm in acceptance pretty... of my age. Um, right. Clearly. clearly. Right. But. but... I wonder if everything ultimately relates back to um, just my desire and need to look at a peacock. What do they call that? Peacocking, right? I wonder if ultimately it's just not some desperate peacocking attempt. It could be. I mean, I don't. On my 49th birthday, I went snowboarding for the first time. Just to say, I went snowboarding. I haven't been since. I have no desire to snowboard. I almost killed somebody. So and and not me. I mean, I was I was okay. There were little kids that got in my way, and uh, you know it, it was. It, I forgot my inhaler back at the cabin, and uh, when I lost my breath, I said, "Okay, it's, it's snowboarding, uh, snowboarding's over." Ah, oh, that's awesome. But but you know, it was one of the things on my bucket list. So your bucket list doesn't include main events of Ultimate Fighting in CD casinos. I've been involved in a lawsuit for the last 14 months because I defended myself in a bar fight. I'm never, it's going to be a long time. Yeah, but nobody I, watches that. Punches. That does don't get viewers. That's just I you know. having fun I'll, in a bar. It's, I've, the, the, um, I wouldn't say rematch, but the, um, you know, taking on the rest of his team has, has been, uh, has been watched, has been observed. <laughs> There's a couple of restaurants I can't go in anymore because I've yelled at people that took his side in this, but that's okay. At the end of the day, are we all just desperately trying to get attention? And when we don't get attention, we do stupid things like relapse or get sober. I mean, can, I, I wonder if people get sober in an attempt going, wow, I'm a mess and I'm alone on Valentine's Day. I should get sober. I mean, does that actually happen? I don't think so. Maybe, okay. <laughs> maybe because there's a lot. Of, there's been a lot of newcomers the last couple of weeks. Has there? Yeah. Not, what are the, not what's all of the them number were one reason not for all people of them getting sober? Retreads. No. Huh? What's the What's the number one reason right now for people coming in that you've seen? Is it still family and work and the normal horseshit? Uh, a lot of women trying to get their kids back. Wow. Yeah. So they've already lost the man, and the man is taken off with the children. No, mom has the children usually. All right, so yeah, man's man's either locked up or gone. Okay, so they've got dirt bags. Dirt bag left. Well, this just sounds like a ripe field of wonderful women for me to come and meet. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, you, you want to be on the board of the halfway house? I want to be on the board of this <laughs> list. I mean, <laughs> uh. Wow, this just sounds like uh, just a lovely, lovely, lovely concoction. Um, what have you seen as of lately? Are there uh, what are their struggles to? Here's the thing: if it came to my daughter, I could say this definitively. There's nothing I'm going to do to relapse while my daughter's alive. That's just not going to happen. I'd right. rather be miserable. I'd rather right. take out an insurance policy. I'd rather fake my death in a car accident. What happens when she gets older? Oh, when she gets older, that's different. I, mm -hmm. I was just recently talking about this with someone. If I can have lunch with her once a week when she gets past the age of 18, I'm going to be a happy guy. I'm. That's literally where I'm at. She's turning 13, getting ready for the whole high school run and the end of time where she's going to be you know, a day-to-day -day thing in my life and go off to college and ultimately start her life and move on hey after 18 if i can get one lunch a day i mean you know one lunch per week with my daughter win-win i don't care where she is you know me have crazy will travel i don't i don't care yeah. i don't care where she goes i mean i would like her to go to school somewhere uh fantastic like hawaii but um she probably won't <laughs> Um, that would be phenomenal 
because then I would immediately have an excuse to purchase uh, property in Hawaii. 